Something big is happening under the West Philippine Sea. A giant volcano like never before is getting ready to erupt. This huge caldera is one of the largest in the world, and its upcoming eruption could be truly massive. Scientists are watching closely, and the anticipation is building. What will this big event look like, and which volcano is about to make its dramatic move? As the pressure builds and signs of activity grow, the world waits with bated breath. Could this eruption reshape landscapes and change lives? Stay tuned, because the countdown has begun, and one thing is sure, the name of this volcanic giant is not Yellowstone. History of Apalaki Caldera The Apalaki Caldera is a volcanic caldera with a diameter of 150 kilometers, making it the world's largest caldera. It is located within the Benham Rise in the northern part of the Philippines, specifically on the island of Luzon, and was discovered in 2019 by Jenny Ann Barreto, a Filipina marine geophysicist and her team. It was named Apalaki, meaning giant lord in Filipino, after the god of sun and war in Philippine mythology. If it is to be compared to Yellowstone Caldera, the more popular one, you could fit Yellowstone into Apalaki Caldera about 2.5 times, considering only the diameter. And in terms of length, the Apalaki Caldera's diameter is roughly 1.4 times larger than the length of the Yellowstone Caldera. Why is Yellowstone more popular than Apalaki if Apalaki is indeed larger? If you are wondering why Apalaki flies under the radar compared to its more famous counterpart, Yellowstone, here are a few reasons. First off, let's talk about visibility. Yellowstone is like the rock star of calderas with its hot springs, geysers, and the occasional earthquake to keep things exciting. If you've ever seen a picture of a geyser erupting, there's a good chance it's from Yellowstone. Basically, Yellowstone is the caldera that everyone knows about. Now, compare that with the Apalaki caldera. It's like the hidden gem that not many people know about, partly because it's hidden away in a less frequented part of the world. Another factor is the level of activity. Yellowstone is an active caldera with ongoing geothermal activity, which means there's always something happening, like geysers spouting and steam venting. It's a show that never ends. Apalaki, on the other hand, is more of a historical figure. Its last major eruption was around 700,000 years ago, so it's like a retired volcano that settled into a quieter phase. There's not much bubbling or steaming, which makes it less visually exciting for those looking for dramatic volcanic displays. In addition, there's a difference in research and exposure. Yellowstone has been extensively studied and monitored, and its data is often featured in scientific research and media reports. Apalaki, while significant, hasn't received the same level of international scientific focus. Formation of Apalaki Caldera so how did this volcano come to be? Volcanic activity. Like any other volcano, it began with the accumulation of magma beneath the Earth's crust. Over time, this magma chamber expanded as molten rock forced its way up, causing significant pressure to build up. Eruption. Eventually, the pressure within the magma chamber became too great for the surrounding rock to contain. This led to a massive eruption that expelled vast amounts of volcanic material, including ash, pumice, and lava, into the atmosphere. Formation of the caldera after the eruption, the magma chamber beneath the volcano was significantly emptied. With the support structure of the magma chamber removed, the land above it collapsed into the emptied space, creating a large, depression-like structure known as a caldera. The Apalaki caldera's collapse formed a circular or oval basin, marking the caldera's current shape. Eruption of the Apalaki caldera. Judging by the massive size of this volcano, it's not difficult to gather that it is a supervolcano. And what exactly are supervolcanoes known for? Their ability to produce eruptions with a volcanic explosivity index, VEI, of eight, the highest on the scale. In simpler words, this means they produce exceptionally large volcanic eruptions with the potential to eject massive amounts of volcanic material. In fact, 
During the review process of this volcano, scientists had to draw on comparisons with calderas from Venus and Mars planet because Apalaki is so large that no comparison is available on Earth. Apart from the fact that these caldera is a super volcano, it's also underwater. And this fact comes with its own unique set of challenges. Underwater calderas, like Apalaki, have complex structures such as submerged volcanic peaks, caldera rims, and potential hydrothermal vents that make it hard to study and explore. The underwater environment requires the need for specialized equipment and technology for exploration and research, such as remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, and submersibles. What now happens if this super large volcano erupts? The result will be catastrophic. It would start with the surface of the ocean, which covers the caldera. A towering column of steam, ash, and superheated gases would burst forth, reaching heights of several kilometers. This explosion would generate gigantic waves. And it's not just your regular beach waves, tsunamis. Coupled with the sudden displacement of water, these waves would destroy coastlines across Asia, Oceania, and the western coast of the Americas. Coastal cities such as Manila, Jakarta, and even distant shores like Tokyo and San Francisco would be battered by these monstrous waves, resulting in widespread flooding and destruction. That's just for above the water. Below the sea surface, several things would also be triggered. The caldera's magma would interact explosively with seawater, generating massive quantities of steam and gas. This reaction would create a network of superheated hydrothermal vents, releasing torrents of molten rock and volcanic gases into the ocean. The fishes and marine mammals won't even know what hit them before they die off. If you're liking this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's talk about the atmosphere, the legendary ash that comes with volcanic eruptions. It is composed of fine volcanic particles and sulfur dioxide. When it is released in large proportions like that, it would form a thick veil that would encircle the Earth and block sunlight, leading to a dramatic drop in global temperatures, a phenomenon known as volcanic winter. If you think these results are far-fetched and impossible, let's look at a, a year without summer. The Mount Tambro supervolcano that erupted in the year 1816. Why does NASA think it might erupt soon? Established in 1958, NASA's primary mission is to lead the U.S. in scientific discovery and technological innovation. To accomplish this, they conduct scientific research to understand the universe and our place in it. This includes studying the Earth's climate and atmosphere, investigating the origins of the universe, and exploring the potential for life on other planets. So, why does NASA think the Apollaki Caldera might erupt soon? The Apollaki Caldera, while currently dormant, is located in a seismically active region. That is, an area where earthquakes frequently occur due to the movement of tectonic plates. It is located in the West Philippine Sea and sits on the boundary between the Philippine Sea Plate and the Eurasian Plate. What's special about this boundary? This boundary is characterized by complex tectonic interactions, including subduction, where one tectonic plate is forced under another, and transform faulting, where plates slide past one another. Also, the West Philippine Sea is part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area with a high frequency of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes due to the movement of tectonic plates. If we add the fact that the Apollaki caldera is situated in this area and the pattern of various supervolcanoes of the past, it is not beyond reason for the NASA to conclude that it's about to erupt soon. Let us know your thoughts about this video in the comments and remember to like and subscribe for more intriguing discoveries like this. See you in the next video.